Hello, my golden viewers of gold. Whatever we are waiting for, happiness, contentment, love, peace of mind, the inner awareness of simple abundance, they will surely come to us, but only if you're willing to receive them with open and grateful heart. As always, you will be inspired, you will be motivated, you will be encouraged because you are loved, you are appreciated, and you are welcome. This is the right place to be. This is gold. Today on gold. It is true that success is knowing your purpose in life, growing to reach your maximum potential, and sowing seeds that benefit others. And as a matter of fact, our champion also said, it is thoughts that inspire life to actually happen. So when you crave for life to happen in a positive way, you must be willing to set yourself in a foundation of positivity, our champion did. He is a facilitator, an executive coach, an entrepreneur. Here is the question, would you ever dream more? If the impulse to dream has been beating out of you, would you leave your comfort zone to an unknown place? He was considered as the son of someone who is bewitched. He is the darkest in his family, slept by a teacher to the extent that he bled all over his shirt. A lot of no's did not stop him from achieving his goals. All of this made him to be more resilient, a true king and a warrior. He turned all his shame to fame all his test to testimony. His inspirational story on gold will blow your mind. A good man is here to inspire you, to dream more and achieve what other thing is unachievable, unattainable or unreachable. Let's go for gold with one of the best speakers of our time, a conqueror, a winner, a hero and a champion. Hi there, my name is Jabu Zwani. I'm a mindset development specialist an entrepreneur, a speaker, facilitator, and an executive coach. I am so excited to be with you in gold. So, come on now, let's go get some gold together. I think there's a particular story I want to share, which is about, actually about a, a teacher. Uh, I think I was in grade uh, three, which would make me nine at the time. And at that time, we used to wash our own clothes. And for some reason, I decided this time, I'm not going to wash that one shirt every day and it was like on the third or fourth day but because we used to use Vaseline, which is like some kind of oil, lotion around the neck, made the whole thing look black and the teacher wasn't very happy and as I walked into the class she then slapped me across the face and then I bled over my shirt. So as a young kid at the time, I mean I thought to myself, my goodness, I'm alone. My mother's not there, my father's not there and even the people like teachers who were supposed to look after me were not you know, they're not seeing me as worthy of anything. But what that did is that it helped me then to be a bit more resilient um, and to start thinking of ways to survive. And one of the things that I did there was to exchange jokes with other kids for lunch. And I think it is those very same resilient skills that I learned to growing up poor, of course, as many of us did grow up poor at the time, but also having those additional elements of uh, discrimination or ostracization or shame. And when you get up to the city, Though that resilient way of thinking and looking at different things, I think was very helpful to help me to navigate the difficult terrain of, of the city. Even gold as a commodity, it has to go through a refining process. And that process, as we know, they always say that uh, the goldsmith, you know, puts the gold up to a thousand degrees and then up until they can, he can see his own image reflection to the gold, then it's not ready yet. But with everything that is valuable in life, there is a process. And I'll say to you, true as it is that there are all these challenges that exist in the world, it is also true that there are many people like myself who've had similar type of challenges, but learned from them. And I would say, number one, what are you learning from the things that you're going through? Number two, are you taking note of those lessons? It's one thing to learn, it's another thing to take note and write down and make sure that they are completely integrated into your mind. Number three, are you applying the things that you have learned? If you've not applied the things you have learned, they're as useless to you. Anything you've got in your hand, as long as you're not using it, or at least whatever purpose you're using it for will determine its value. If you're not using it, it's valueless. And then whatever you're using it for will determine its value. And the fourth thing is that once you practice, do you take time to look at what you got wrong and improve? There's the thing of applying, there's the thing of making mistakes, taking stock, and then improving. That is the process in the end that'll distinguish you from the rest of the people. 
The truth of the matter is this, and it's research proven over and over again, 99% of the people in the world do not do their best. That means that any human being in the world has got a 99% chance actually of success. Before you quit, have you really done your best? Have you applied your best in terms of your intellectual capacity? Have you given the time that you needed you to give? Have you opened yourself up to other people? Have you gone to different environments, asked for questions, requested for help? And when help was given to you, what did you do with that help? Continue to learn, continue to take stock of what you can improve on. That would be very, very helpful. That's what I would say to you. And unless you've done all of that, it's very difficult for me to believe that um, cheating, suicide, cutting corners is the way to go. I think first of all, it's important to define what success is. Success to me is the ability to achieve whatever you are aiming for. So if you're aiming to make a lot of money and you achieve that, that to you of course will be success. But the way that I understand success is that actually success is a consequence of your activities. So whatever it is that you're doing with the goal in mind to achieve that goal. When you perform those activities and then the outcome of, the, of those activities is a successful achievement of the goal, that could be a goal-driven success. Then there's a factor of success of life in general. What kind of life do you want to live? If that for you is uh, full of money, full of mentions, and you derive some kind of gratification out of that and it's proof of your own worth as a person, to perhaps that is to you success. For me personally, success is the ability to provide for myself, provide for those that I love, and to provide a bit more for those out there who, who have less than I do. And whether that is money, whether that is knowledge, whether that is um, my own emotional availability, you know, whether it's time, whatever it is, that I have an abundance that I can share with others, that for me is success. This, the one thing that I'm very happy about that's going well in the world is collaboration. The fact that, especially after COVID-19, we're now embracing, embracing the digital world, the Zooms, the, uh, the, the Teams, the Google, of course, access on the phone. I mean, the world is within reach. In my industry, quite a lot of the work that I do, I don't even have to leave my office. I just sit here at home and I make as much money as I would have gotten on a plane and go somewhere else. But another part of that is that um, that has made everybody aware of each other's existence. I no longer have to explain to many different people in the world where South Africa is. A lot of people in the world know. Uh, people know where Ghana is now. Even here in South Africa before, people wouldn't know where West Africa was or that even exists. And so that globalization has made the world smaller. Don't limit your existence only to your locality. That's what I love about what's going on right now in the world. Collaboration and the access that it gives me to div diversity of knowledge, of people, of experiences, of geographical locations. Beautiful people with beautiful souls. There is no greater intelligence than kindness and empathy. Let's go for a break on gold. We are coming back. Gold is the ultimate. Those who are happiest are those who do most for others. And the reason is simple. Happiness is a byproduct of an effort to make someone else happy. Please help our future help us because the real generosity towards the future consists in giving all to what is present. In other words, the best way to protect our future is to nourish our present. Please let your heart be golden. Hello, my name is Mara Glenny and I'm the founder of Tears Foundation. We assist victims of rape and abuse. It's wonderful to be here today with all of you on gold. Two of the major milestones in my journey with Tears Foundation have been life-changing ones. The first one was when I finally was able to find somebody who could develop the program for me that it would be free to use by anybody anywhere in South Africa on their mobile phone. The second one was when I finally came to the place that the service was so well established, we'd helped almost a half a million people and we were able to 
add developments to that. So this year we'll be launching our new extension to the TIERS service. After I'd recovered from my abuse, I started TIERS Foundation. But before I was able to do so, I'd gone through many bad, dark places. I'd even tried suicide. I felt so hopeless, unloved, unwanted. But there is hope to everyone out of you who are watching this program today. Look, I am here today and each day I live my best life. And I'm saying to you, there's a reason for you to be alive. You can make the best of your future. Follow your heart and your dreams. One of the lessons is don't be afraid to ask for help. Because when you ask for help, people will suddenly beat your expectations and help you much more than you could ever imagined. You could also ask God because I know it was God who gave me the vision for this service. I was abused before the Me Too movement started. And one of the things that really pleases me now is that with the Me Too movement, it encouraged women and men to speak out about their abuse. Because speaking out about your abuse brings you a freedom. Because actually it is not you that's to blame. It's the abuser. If you're feeling bad today as you watch this gold program, I urge you to reach out to someone today. I can assure you from personal experience that the reception that you get when you ask for help will astound you. People out there really do want to help you. But quite often when we've been hurt and we're feeling bad, we don't know how to reach out anymore and we close ourselves off. So open yourself up to receive the help that is waiting there for you today. I've got four major keys to uh, founding tears. The first one is I have tenacity. Don't give up. If you've got the vision, make sure that you stick to it. Secondly, you can get advisors, but it is your vision. You're the one that must carry it forward and don't expect other people to share your vision. Three, don't do it for self-gratification because if you're really doing something from your heart, that's where you will get your gratification. You won't get it from other people because they don't share your vision. And then finally, for continuity, it's important to train other people to do what you do. Don't jealousy guard your knowledge. Share it. That way your vision will carry on. My wish for the Gold TV program is that the viewers of this program are blessed over and over again with inspirational stories that will encourage them to reach the highest hearts because we live in such a world where people turn around to us and say it can't be done. Look at this gloomy situation. And we actually are doomsayers in so many ways. And one of the blessings of the Gold TV program is that it's a it shows inspirational stories. I know that for me, when I watch the program, I feel uplifted. My favorite quote is, get up, get dressed, and show up. And yes, I do that myself, even when you feel lousy. Get up, get dressed, and show up. You inspire people not by showing them how connected you are. You inspire people by showing them how important they are, how useful they are, and how helpful they are great people, inspire them so that it can bring out the greatness in them. Ordinary people be inspired by their stories and become extraordinary. For Lauren Shaw Alakija is a dynamic Nigerian businesswoman and philanthropist who has established herself as one of Africa's foremost entrepreneurs. Before venturing into business, she was an office administrator and banker. Remember, your current situation should not be your final destination. Do what you love and help others. Well, eventually, she followed her heart and the creative calling to join the fashion industry. She founded the Rose of Sharon Foundation with a mandate to help widows and their children as well as orphans, taking away hopelessness and wiping away tears. This is the success story of Folorinsho Alakija, one of the wealthiest women in Africa. Her resilience to fight and persist until she attains success is an inspiration to many people around the world. Here is my view. You need to be aware of what others are doing. Applaud their efforts, acknowledge their successes, and encourage them in the pursuit. When we help one another, I promise you, everybody wins. Your views 
a golden tool. Hello guys, my name is Nkita Mbeu. I am grateful because I am alive, I am working, I am in touch with my family. Ever since I started working, everything is going well for me. Um, that's my message today, just don't lose hope. Everything, uh, anything is possible. The smallest act of caring for another person is just like a drop of water. It will make ripples throughout the entire pond. Let us go for another beautiful break on gold. We are coming back. Don't go nowhere. The first step towards success is taken when you refuse to be a captive of the environment in which you first find yourself. Trust me, I've been there. Do not let your family, your friends and your fans tell you that you can never be great. Go after your dreams and trust God. Remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. A champion of the day still here, inspiring souls on gold. Mindset Development Institute, it basically is an institute that I'm currently uh, running with a, with a partner friend of mine, Alison Weyer. And there we give in solutions to corporates, you know, helping them to build a critical thinking mindsets. We do, I develop quite a lot of critical thinking models that I use to develop many different courses that I use to offer to different corporates to solve the problems of leadership, to achieve the goals of entrepreneurship to enable people to become better communicators so that you don't lose your message as soon as you open your mouth, you actually become your own enemy. You know, some people can become like that. That is my main project that I feel is my gift to the world. Yeah, I've got a quick story actually. I've got a story I'm thinking about right now that inspires me. I'm gonna paraphrase it in the way that I can remember it. But it's a story that I heard about this young man. Young, this little kid was walking with his father and then he's looking at his old man in front of the porch and with a dog right next to him. And as he observes the dog, he realizes that there's a, a nail sticking out of, from the wooden porch. But the dog has its foot in that nail and keeps on removing the foot and putting it back in there. And then, but it's in his bleeding a little bit. And then the, 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 the young man says to his father, Daddy, how come the old man doesn't remove the dog from the nail? And then the father said to him, you know what, son? The moment that nail begins to hurt a lot, that dog will move. At the moment, it's not painful enough. It still is comfortable. That's why the dog is, 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 is still lying there and the old man knows it. And that hit me so hard about how we can create comfort out of our pain. And because perhaps it has healed a little bit, the chaos and the trauma of the pain has subsided a little bit, even sometimes, the comfort that we get when people feel sorry for us, you know, like I see with my kids, I see with many, many different kids, where they will make themselves feel like, so, you know, look at me, I'm feeling, and then you have to ask, come, what's going on, what's, you know, and then, and then they'll tell you, they start crying, and then you wipe their face, and then eventually they tell you what's going on. I see that with a lot of adults, where our pain has become a, um, a, a, a way of soliciting pity from people. But there's another way also that, that pain does that, we also, it's also, it can also be a way of escaping the reality and the harshness of life. Like, okay, fine. I got hurt, now I don't have to go out there because I got hurt. And then I use that and I'll lean on that and say, because I got hurt, I don't have to trust people anymore. I don't have to be nice anymore. I don't have to try anymore because I've been disappointed, because I've been let down. I can now come up with some kind of rule that says, everybody's a jerk, men are dogs women are, are gold diggers, you know, black people are thieves, white people are racists, you know, Africans are lazy. I mean, I can come up with many different simplify rules because I don't want to go through the necessary complex process of tackling issues, thoughts, beliefs, words, actions, outcomes, five things. The way we think determines what we're going to believe. What we believe determines what we're going to say. What we say is going to also determine what we're going to do. And what we do is going to determine the outcomes. It's very simple. Okay, I have a wish for gold, but before I talk about my wish for gold, I want to say what excites me about gold. What excites me is that it brings the freshness that we need. There are too many reality shows out there that are concentrating on things that are just that are set to entertain people that are negative, that are curious, 
but they're not giving any value. And because of that, I wish that gold would get the support that it needs. I wish that for, uh, for more inspirational people who have lived the life that people are hoping to live will be on the show and they will share generously and they will share without fear, they'll share without censoring so that those people out there who need to hear those things can hear them and they can maybe help somebody to encourage them to go and do their business. This is crucial. It's crucial for our continent. It's crucial regionally. It's crucial for the world especially for the world and for the Africans themselves to hear powerful African bread stories. Well, my four major keys to success, the first one, of course, is God, no doubt about it. And more than just the uh, believing God, but actually God as the supreme accountability institution. It's one thing for us to say we love God. It's one thing for us to say we believe. But how accountable are we to the institution of God, our character? our motives, our commitment to our work, hardworking, and they did it unto God, not unto man. And I believe that when you do that, it's, it, it transforms the way you look at things, even your own motivations and your own level of gratification, especially in terms of heart, when things are hard. Number two, I would say family. Vital, support of the family, and family doesn't have to necessarily be your blood family. It's just people that are there for you because of your value. And they, they deciding to be there to support you, to be with you, to encourage you, to comfort you, to irk you on, especially when things are getting very hard. The way you think. Your success is, is, is trapped in the way you think. It is in there. If you think that you need to succeed because you need to be important, the likelihood that you're going to mistreat people is very high. And then the last thing that I would say as well is um, you need to account for yourself. When the world, when the people, the names of the people in the world are being called out, what is yours associated with? Mindsets are category, categories of thinking that lead to a specific outcome. Now, I've noted this in my years. It's never a question of ability. People are able. It's never a question of hard work. People are hardworking. It's never a question of intelligence. Many people are very intelligent. Sometimes it's not even a question of your resources because there are plenty of resources out there in the world. But it's always about the way we think. The categories of thinking that, that build the way you see things. How do you see your struggle? What, how do you label it? What meanings do you attach to it? How do you see your success, King Me? Once the, the show, let's say for example, where it gets where it needs to be, how do you begin to see that? How do you begin to see yourself because of, of your success? How do you see yourself because of your lack of success? What are, the, what are those categories of thinking that build the, 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 the way you think and lead to the outcomes? What are the outcomes again? Decisions. Decisions you're making, your commitment, the disciplines you've got, the practices you've got, whether you're consistent or not. Consistency, for example, I believe that is the strongest link in the chain of success. If you're not consistent, what are the outcomes? And often things like consistency, procrastination, um, poor quality work, have a lot to do with the way we think more than it does to do with our level of hard work, our competencies, our capabilities, our abilities, or even the resources. We know this a lot when you travel in Africa. Highly competent, able people just doing the least and then expecting the most. Listen to me, golden viewers of gold. People that make it in this world look around for circumstances and opportunities that they want. But if they can't find them, they create them. They also know the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. So keep climbing. Don't stop climbing because there's gold on every mountain. We will see you next time on gold. Always go for gold and go forth and prosper.
Peace.